Welcome to this first look at TD Mobile, the product for building mobile business applications. I am Martin Tietz, I'm the product manager for TD Mobile. First, let me show you a sample application that is running on an iPhone. I'm using an AirPlay Windows server to demonstrate this on the screen. Let me show you a simple but typical database business application here. Let me log on with my username and password to use this um, application. Typing my password here, press the login button, and now I'm presented with a list of customers from our CRM system database. I click on a customer, then I see the details of this customer, like address, data, and these things. Then again, I can press the see invoices button, with my, tap on it, and I get the available invoices for this customer. So I see if they have been paid, click on the details, see when it has been invoiced, when it has been paid, the amount. And then I can click on see invoice items. So I see all the details that this invoice included, which were three different um, positions. Easy mobile access to central customer data. This is what sales reps can use in the field easily. With TD Mobile, you can target any mobile device, independent of the screen size, the resolution being used, or the device size that is being used. Target iOS with iPhone and iPad devices, Android devices coming from Samsung, Google, LG, whatever you are using out there, or whatever your customers or your users are using. Support Windows Phone and Windows 8 RT with TD Mobile. Using the TD Mobile IDE, you can quickly design your user interface screens, drop data fields, buttons, and all the things you need, including formatting. And then you can easily link those uh, data fields to backend web services and databases so you get your business logic tied into your application. Here is how you design your TD Mobile applications. You have a, an initial page that can be a phone or a tablet page. You can define your own um, screen sizes that you want to use. But you just take an object here and you drop it onto, onto the screen. And then um, you go to, into the properties of this object to set um, what this is. Like the caption of this should be company. And the header of this entire page should be island. A nice GUI editor that allows you to include like groups, list views. So this would display um, a list of companies, for example, and I would need to add some binding in here. So you can choose from a number of um, objects that you want to put on your um, screen, like text, buttons, data field, checkbox, flip switch, images, groups, HTML controls, links, list views, and whatever. You drop those onto your screen, and then you have here the on the right side, you have the properties you can assign to that object, including the binding, which um, at the end binds the vis visual object to the backend server logic. And just let me switch to another one, switch on to the phone tab. And here you see um, a basically a grid view for invoice items in this one here. Or if you want to, if you have the select company um, window, you just have a list of companies that is going, that is being displayed in your application. Access databases and web services with your TD Mobile applications. You build web services that include multiple operations. The operations do all the business processing for you. They are selecting data, they are inserting data, they are updating data, and then you link the operations to GUI elements to execute them at the right point in your application. See how easy it is to build server-side logic that is being called by your mobile applications. I have the island application source code open now. That is the application that you saw at the beginning of this video on the iPhone. And here's the login page code. 
you see there's a client section and a server section in on the login page. If I look into the code of the server section, then I see there are operations and there's one, one operation called login. And here are the um, details for that login operation. So if basically if something, somebody doesn't provide a password, then we are not allowing login. And if everything is okay, then we are doing a login. So this is a very simple um, backend operation that is being executed here. And let's see on the client side, you have contents like the push button PB login and that push button has events, for example, the on click event and you can on click you invoke login. And here you see this drop down list provides the available operation on this page. So basically if somebody presses the or touches the login button, then the login operation is being invoked. So this triangle here is filled. So that means there's more that happens behind the um, invoke login. So if login status, so that's basically a binary binding that is being queried here. If login status equals true, then do this here, navigate. And the navigate has a drop down here, which uh, navigates to another screen basically. So you choose the screen to navigate to and the parameters to enter to um, uh, go to the next screen. In this case, no parameters are being passed to the next screen, which is select company. And let's have a look at select company here, which is a slightly more complex one. And let me show you the bindings here. The bindings are um, where the link between the backend server logic and the uh, front end application is being done. So what you see here is there is a, a binding, which is a class company, which is a, a um, um, a custom defined variable that is a company object. And then you also have an array of companies which uh, contains company objects. So, and here on this page on create, you see a different event than before. You, we are invoking a server logic, which is called on server operation, which is called get companies. So let's have a look at the server side code here. We have operations and I would say there is an operation called get companies. And you see here that there are actions and here's um, it's just querying if the connect has been done before, then we are preparing actually SQL to a database and we are filling the, um, the array of companies, this array of, uh, of UDV companies, and we are returning that object companies back to the client. And that is then being inserted into the, um, into the list of companies that is being displayed on the device. If you go onto the device look here, you will see that there's just the companies.name and this is being a list that is populated. Those, basically this page shows a list of companies from the database. Now let's have a look at what happens if somebody taps on a company name in this list here. Go back to the code page here and in the client contents, there's the C list view and the C list view has events attached to it. And there's the on click event. So that's basically if somebody taps on this on a company, then there's a navigate command again. So basically move to another page, page name is company details and we are passing the company ID here. So basically the, comp the next page gets an information from us, which is the company ID that will allow the next page to retrieve the company ID and display the details for the uh, selected company. So if we go onto the company details page on the client side here, page events on create and on create it does get company details. And if you look at the operation of get company details, then you will see that the parameter to it is the um, ID of the customer and the act actions are, if it's connected, then execute the SQL um, and return the company object requested by this um, client screen. And here's how the client application client screen looks. You know, they have a company name, company address, company city, state, zip, and so on. So let's have a quick look at the iPhone application again. On the iPhone, I will enter my username and password. 
because remember if I leave those empty I won't be able to connect to my application or to my data that I need to see. Tap on the login button. If my user credentials are correct then I'm now getting the list of companies from the company operation if you remember right. So this operation returned an array of company objects and displays the company name in a list. Now if I tap on a single um, company here then it will open the company details and you remember that we passed the company ID into this page so it knows what details to retrieve. So this is how easy you can create mobile applications with TD Mobile. TD Mobile apps have built-in internationalization. You can build multi-language applications from scratch. You provide multiple language strings for your text labels, messages, etc. during the development stage of your application. At runtime, the application decides what language to use depending on device language settings. So your users will see the language they are using on their device. TD Mobile has really easy deployment features for testing and for production systems. During the development stage, we included an IIS Lite version that makes it easy to test the mobile application on the same machine that you are developing your application. For production, we provide an easy to use wizard that will move all the required files and web services to a production server running internet information server. Though the only thing you have to do is give your users the final URL to use your mobile application. Team Developer Mobile is easy to learn and use for new customers and it is easy for team developer users. You have a familiar look and feel of an outline IDE and you can reuse your existing team developer business logic for your mobile business applications. TD Mobile helps organizations to quickly build and deploy mobile business applications that are targeted at a host of different devices that are being used out there. With TD Mobile, you do not need development teams to target iOS and Android and other platforms. You just have one platform that gets it all done all. So stay tuned for the launch of TD Mobile in fall later this year.